Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Anil Joshi. Welcomes you to my series, Learn Radiology with Dr. Anil Joshi. This series has got multiple lectures on different topics, covering all branches of imaging and in depth their physics as well as their applications. Multiple cases are discussed. In this lecture today, we are going to see types of CT scan. In that also, there are multiple types of CTs like uh, we have got axial CT, we have got helical CT but in this lecture we are going to see only MD CT and cardiac CT. Remaining CT are covered in some other lecture. Please visit our website or YouTube channel. You will find details of it. Before going to the lecture, let us first give thanks from those who have got all this teaching material. It is from our department which is going on since many years. So also certain material has come from the net which we have downloaded but we have confirmed that it is royalty free. With this disclosure, acknowledgement, disclaimers and thanks, let us get going to the topic that is the radiophysics in that types of CT, MD CT and cardiac CT which is today's topic. First to start with are the MD CT. Now here we are seeing how MD CT differs. We can see X-ray tube or CT tube. Then there is tube collimator, then there is a collimator slice which is coming down, then there are detectors which are taking the signals, then there is single row detector and there are multiple row detectors. Now left hand side what we are seeing are the single slice. What we are seeing on the right side are the multiple that is MDCT. So what is there in the multi CT? Slices are multiple. Slices are multiple. So there are multiple rows of detectors and look at the X-ray beam that is leaving the tube. There is a difference between it. So more area is covered by MDCT. How it does it? Okay, let us see it in this lecture. So, multi-detector computer tomography is a form of CT technology used in a diagnostic images. The MDCT technology, a two-dimensional like 2D array of detector element replaces a linear array of detectors element used in a typical conventional and helical CT scanners. Now there are two main differences between ordinary spiral CT machines or scanners and MDCT. Number one, MDCT allows acquisition of multiple axial images with a single gantry rotation and number two, it has a shorter gantry resolution period making it much faster. So these are the two differences by which it becomes a faster, better, good for reconstruction and good for patient because we don't need patient much cooperation. It is very fast and quick. The introduction of fast rotating multi-slice CT scanner occurred in late 1990s that is 10 years after the introduction of helical CT. The rotational time of the single slice CT scanner was 1 to 2 seconds. The slice thickness and normal beam width is almost clinical application that was of 10 mm. In multi-slice scanner, 4, 16, 64 and 124 adjacent active arrays of the detectors were used enabling the simultaneous measurement of a corresponding large number of transmission profiles. At the same time, the rotation time dropped to well below 0.3 seconds or 0.4 seconds. So, it is a fraction of second we were getting a rotation. Subsequently, the fast multi-slice CT scanner, it is possible to scan almost entire body of an adult within one breath hold at a slice thickness of 1 mm. The acquisition with multi-detector row of CT scanners are usually operated in a helical mode. Exceptions are for example, high resolution CT of a lung and step and shoot cardiac CT for either coronary calcium 
scoring or coronary angiographies. Now, these coronary scanners we are going to see in subsequent part of this lecture. That is the cardiac CT scan. Now, let's get going with the cardiac CT. There are certain specifications required for cardiac CT. It has got all the requirement as that of the fast moving CT scan. But it has got one another thing required that is to deliver at a fraction of second when required. And that is to going to be triggered by the ECG. Now, this special application of cardiac CT was the highest point of slippering and technology. Now, low pitch helical cardiac scanning we will see. The introduction of fast rotating multi slice CT scanner occurred in the late 1990s, 10 years after the introduction of helical CT. The rotation time of a single slice CT scanner was 1 to 2 seconds. The slice thickness was around 1 mm or less than that. And almost all body was covered in a single breath that is around less than 1 second or 1 to 1.5 seconds. In multi slice scanner that is 4, 16, 64, 128, adjacent active arrays of detectors are used, enabling the simultaneous measurement of a corresponding large number of transmission profiles. Cardiac scan after the innovation of CT itself, moving from first generation CT scan to the third generation scan was faster. Introduction of sleepering rings into the modern CT scan is the most important step for improving speed of scanning. Now, it was enabled a number of clinical applications. What? What enabled? Introduction of sleeping rings to modern CT scan because it became a very fast scanner then. These were hypothesized when Nobel Prize was granted for CT scan but were possible only after sleepering technology came into reality. So, hypothecation, consideration, expectation was when CT was expected. But reality came totally after 30 years. So, that was the time gap we took to go from a basic CT scan to the cardiac scan which is the highest. In this respect, we can uh, view cardiac scanning as the subset of the Cine scanning. So, it is a type of Cine scanning where gating is added based on the ECG signal. The sleeping rings plays an important role in cardiac scanning since the gantry needs to be rotating fast and ready to turn on the X-rays when the heart is at its stationary phase which can be 1 to 2 seconds. In that gantry has to complete its work. Now, cardiac scanning is one of the most complicated acquisition by modern CT scanners and ranked highest or high in CT evaluation. It is enabled only because of introduction of sleeping rings to the CT scanner. We came to the fractional second CT scanner. Today's state of art CT scans can cover an entire heart with one axial section, but the sleep ring is at the heart of the design since the gantry must be rotating many times before the X-rays are on because it has to catch up a tremendous speed of rotation that cannot happen just with at the beginning. So, the gantry start much before it is triggered and it waits for its time and when heart come to its resting phase, the gantry turns on. So, this is the technique of CT, cardiac CT and that is how the cardiac CTs are done. A technique which is related to CNA scanning is cardiac CT. In cardiac CT, there are typical variety of acquisition mode, but they all rely on couple of basic input that is fast and continuous rotation that is slip anode and second ECG input to provide the gating signals for when the acquisition or acquired data and which time point to make the images. Now, we are seeing some couple of examples here. The cardiac CT is based on the synchronization of the image reconstruction with the ECG and selection of the best cardiac resting phase. So, for heart it is resting, for gantry it is highest working. The figure shows reconstruction of the heart at different cardiac phases demonstrating the difference in 
blurring of the coronary arteries at different cardiac phase. So, getting a correct phase is most important. Here, the cardiac phase corresponds with 70 percent of the RR interval produces the best motion free results that is 70 percent mark the art of the cardiac phase interval. Here you are seeing the how ECG getting is uh, synchronized when the scans are done and how the results are obtained cardiac motion versus the uh, gantry revolutions. Now cardiac scanning require the cardiac motion to be minimized. Therefore, to freeze the motion which cannot be done for long time, the image during that phase of least cardiac motion is generally achieved during diastole or end systole. Cardiac reconstruction can be retrospective ECG gated reconstructions and prospective ECG triggered reconstructions. In both cases ECG of the patient is linked to the scanner in order to trigger the scan to the link the acquired data with the heart phase retrospectively. In recently it is used for both purposes to a great and lesser extent depending on the type of process. Now here again we are showing it helical that is the pitch then uh, excess on data reconstruction and ECG phases. What is retrospective ECG gated reconstruction? A helical scan is performed with overlapping pitch. A cardiac phase selected data is selected retrospectively based on the registration of the raw data and ECG during the or more entire cardiac cycle. Diagrammatically it is represented here to reduce the radiation dose in the phase that are not required or not of interest ECG does module is used. What we use is the low dose module. Going further in cardiac prospective ECG trigger reconstructions are step and shoot that is axial acquisition and advantage of such acquisition is the reduction of patient's dose what we are talking just now. Some CT scanner allow for prospective scanning of the entire heart within one single heartbeat at pre-selected cardiac rest phase. A fast dual source CT scanner is capable of performing a helical acquisition of the entire heart and a wide cone beam CT scanners perform an acquisition of entire heart with one single rotation. Such novel single heartbeat technique carry the promise of subs substantial dose reduction. So, these are the two different techniques which we have just now seen. We have discussed it. Now, summary of cardiac scanning. Scanning mode, step and shoot, axial sequence, then cardiac mode is prospective triggered and features are padding to provide greater flexibility of reconstruction. Then second is helical, cardiac mode is retrospective getting and what features we get is ECG modulation to prospective reduce dose from constant irradiation, some margin left for flexibility of reconstructions. So, these are the different types. Now, there are CTs for interventional procedure also, but these are covered in the other lecture. The CT when used for interventional has got a modification, the machine has to be modified, the controls has to be modified and all these things is a topic of different lecture. They are covered in lecture, do visit it, it is in same lecture series. With that, we are coming to end of lecture. I thank you for giving me your valuable time. Please visit our website for comprehensive and detailed lecture over this topic and many more. Thank you, goodbye and take care.